This presentation reviews thyroglobulin measurement, a test used as a tumor marker to monitor patients with differentiated thyroid cancer. I have no commercial relationships to disclose. Both thyroglobulin and thyroglobulin antibody measurements are used as thyroid cancer tumor marker tests and are measured as a panel on all sera. The thyroglobulin antibody measurement is used to assess possible antibody interference with the thyroglobulin test. And when present, the trend in the antibody levels is used as a surrogate tumor marker. My presentation will address four questions. First, what are the strengths and limitations of the different thyroglobulin methodologies, immunometric assay, radioimmunoassay, and the new liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry tests? Second, what is an optimal strategy for monitoring thyroglobulin antibody negative patients, especially those low risk patients who do not receive radioiodine for remnant ablation? Third, what is an optimal strategy for monitoring patients with thyroglobulin antibody detected? And four, how reliable are current methods for detecting interfering thyroglobulin antibodies? Well, on the left are listed the three classes of thyroglobulin method. Immunometric assays are only valid in the absence of thyroglobulin antibodies. But since 75% of thyroid cancer patients are thyroglobulin antibody negative, IMA is used for most thyroglobulin testing. The advantages of IMA is that it is rapid and automated, and the newer second generation IMA methods, characterized by a functional sensitivity of 0.1, that have the most clinical sensitivity, are becoming the standard of care. However, IMA methods are prone to antibody interferences, thyroglobulin antibodies causing falsely low or undetectable thyroglobulin values, and human anti-mouse antibodies, HAMA, causing falsely high thyroglobulin values. Further, the monoclonal antibody reagents used for IMA methodology have limited epitope specificities for detecting abnormal tumor thyroglobulin molecules. Radioimmunoassay, the older technique, is only used for thyroglobulin antibody positive sera. Because RAA resists thyroglobulin antibody interference and is not affected by HAMA. The polyclonal antibodies used for RAA have broader epitope specificities and are thus more likely to detect abnormal tumor TG molecules than the monoclonal antibodies used for IMA. However, RIAs have tenfold less sensitivity than second generation IMAs and have long turnaround times, sometimes up to six days. Liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry is the newest class of thyroglobulin method. These methods are free from hammer interferences and claim freedom from thyroglobulin antibody interference. However, to date, the clinical sensitivity of TG mass spec tests for detecting disease in patients with thyroglobulin antibodies has been disappointing. TG mass spec tests also have tenfold less sensitivity than second generation IMAs. They require extensive specimen preparation involving trypsin digestion of thyroglobulin, thyroglobulin antibody complexes, and these tests may fail to yield the target peptide when tumor TG is polymorphic. Monitoring strategy for thyroglobulin antibody negative patients, especially those low risk patients who do not receive radioiodine for remnant ablation. Well, as shown in green, the serum thyroglobulin reference range for normal subjects with an intact thyroid gland approximates 2 to 40. Thyroglobulin tests with only first-generation functional sensitivity, RIA, some IMAs, 
and the new mass spec tests can only measure down to the 0.5 to 1 range, so close to the lower limit of the euthyroid reference range that first generation assays are often too insensitive to detect low levels of tumor thyroglobulin after thyroidectomy without first stimulating with recombinant human TSH. In contrast, tests with second generation functional sensitivity can reliably measure basal, that is non-TSH stimulated thyroglobulin, and it is this level of sensitivity that is optimal for monitoring thyroidectomized patients. So second generation thyroglobulin assays are becoming the standard of care because they obviate the need for expensive and inconvenient recombinant human TSH stimulation. As seen on the left, there is a strong correlation between the basal non-TSH stimulated TG shown on the abscissa and the recombinant TSH stimulated TG shown on the ordinate. In fact, there is a fairly predictable approximate tenfold difference between basal and recombinant TSH stimulated TG values in most patients. Very few patients with basal thyroglobulin below 0.1 will have a recombinant TSH stimulated TG above the consensus cutoff of 2. Furthermore, as shown on the right, a very low basal thyroglobulin below 0.15 in this study had a comparable negative predictive value to recombinant TSH stimulation, and the positive predictive value was also comparable, only about 50% for both basal and recombinant TSH stimulated TG. It follows that assays with second generation functional sensitivity are needed to monitor the low thyroglobulin concentrations arising from normal remnant tissue in patients who receive no radioiodine treatment. And there will be an increasing number of these patients being monitored because the new 2015 American Thyroid Association guidelines recommend that low risk patients no longer need routine radioiodine remnant ablation. As shown here, Following thyroidectomy and after initiating thyroid hormone therapy to prevent TSH from rising, the thyroglobulin level originating from normal remnant is typically below 0.5 and remains remarkably stable throughout subsequent years of follow-up, provided that patients remain disease-free and thyroxine therapy remains consistent to prevent TSH from rising. There is increasing recognition that the doubling time of the basal thyroglobulin measured during thyroxine therapy used to maintain a low TSH is a useful prognostic indicator as found for other tumor marker assays such as calcitonin used as a tumor marker for medullary cancers. This study showed four trends, a rapid thyroglobulin rise for the doubling time less than one year was associated with the worst prognosis. A thyroglobulin doubling time between one and three years was associated with an intermediate prognosis. And a thyroglobulin doubling time of greater or equal to three years or a declining thyroglobulin trend was associated with an excellent prognosis. So when no thyroglobulin antibody is present, and a constant non-elevated TSH is maintained, and there's no thyroid injury, secondary to recent surgery or radioiodine, the trend in the basal thyroglobulin becomes a patient-specific parameter that integrates changes in tumor mass with the efficiency of that individual's tumor for secreting thyroglobulin. However, for long-term monitoring of the serum thyroglobulin trend, it is critical to use the same manufacturer's method and preferably the same laboratory.
This is because thyroglobulin assays differ in their specificity for detecting heterogeneous tumor thyroglobulin molecules. When a second generation IMA, like the Beckman method shown in blue on this slide, is used consistently, the imprecision of measurement made over 6 to 12 months, the typical time span for monitoring thyroid cancer patients, is less than 15%. The blue boxes shown on the left of this slide indicate the 95% confidence intervals of measuring thyroglobulin with this second generation IMA at different concentrations with this degree of error. Shown in green are the serum thyroglobulin levels measured in 37 TG antibody negative patients with structural disease using three different methods the second generation IMA, a mass spec test, and an RIA. Between method TG differences often exceeded 15%, and in the five cases shown in red, there was an over 30% difference, a magnitude that certainly would have had the potential to disrupt thyroglobulin monitoring and negatively impact clinical management. So what is the optimal monitoring strategy for patients with thyroglobulin antibody detected? Thyroglobulin antibody prevalence in patients with thyroid cancer is more than twofold higher than the general population, which approximates 12%. So thyroglobulin antibody interference with thyroglobulin measurement is a major problem because it has the potential to affect management of a third of thyroid cancer patients at some time in their course. The presence of thyroglobulin antibody at the time of diagnosis may be an important risk factor. Thyroglobulin antibody positive patients tend to have a higher stage of disease in terms of multifocality, lymph node metastasis, an extrathyroidal extension, and thus, not surprisingly, in three independent studies, a higher recurrence risk. Also, the higher the thyroglobulin antibody concentration, it appears the higher the risk. So patients with thyroglobulin antibodies warrant close monitoring and perhaps more frequent imaging, especially given that thyroglobulin measurements are less reliable in the presence of thyroglobulin antibodies. So how does thyroglobulin antibody interfere with thyroglobulin measurements? Well, the risk for thyroglobulin antibody interference with TG measurement is method related. This is because IMA methods appear to detect only free thyroglobulin that is thyroglobulin not bound to antibody, whereas RIA and its claim the mass spec tests can quantify both free thyroglobulin and thyroglobulin complexed with antibody. The bottom line is that thyroglobulin antibody interferes with TG IMA methods, causing underestimation that may potentially lead to a failure to detect disease. The most striking example of TG antibodies causing IMA underestimation is seen with Graves' hypothyroidism, where TSH receptor antibody stimulation would be expected to result in a high serum thyroglobulin. Now, not all Graves' patients have thyroglobulin antibodies. In this study, shown in blue are patients without thyroglobulin antibodies who had, as expected, high serum thyroglobulin concentrations measured by two different IMA methods. In contrast, as shown in pink, the patients with thyroglobulin antibodies detected generally had lower serum thyroglobulin values and some were even paradoxically undetectable. This problem of TG antibodies interfering with TGIMA measurements causing falsely low values 
has prompted laboratories, at least those in the United States, to reflex TG testing to different methodologies based on whether the TG antibodies are detected in the serum specimen. The goal of this practice is to maximize the clinical sensitivity of the second generation IMA while minimizing reporting falsely low TG IMA due to TG antibody interference. So when no TG antibodies are detected, which is the case for 75% of patients, serum TG is measured by the second generation IMA, whereas when TG antibodies are detected, TG testing is reflexed to a TG antibody resistant method like RIA or mass spec, because although these methods are less sensitive than the second generation IMA, they are expected to be less prone to report falsely low or undetectable TG values that could mask disease. Now, is this reflex strategy effective? Specifically, do the new TG mass spec tests overcome the problem of TG antibody interference causing falsely low or undetectable TG values? Well, three studies have now found that TG mass spec tests report a high percentage of paradoxically undetectable TG when patients with structural disease have TG antibodies detected. This slide compares the clinical sensitivity of the three different TG methodologies in cohorts of patients with structural disease and TG antibodies using the same detection limit of 0.5 for all methods. In the first two studies, each including more than 50 patients shown by the orange and blue bars, 58% had undetectable second generation IMA, and whereas fewer had an undetectable TG using mass spec, there were still 23% in the first study and 44% in the second that had no TG detected by mass spec despite the presence of disease. Only a few patients had undetectable TG using the RIA method. Shown in pink is the latest cohort of patients to be studied. In this study, 92% of the patients had undetectable second generation IMA, and again, fewer had undetectable TG using mass spec, but still over 75% were paradoxically undetectable. And this was regardless of which of the three different mass spec tests was used. Again, very few had an undetectable TG RIA. Now, what could explain the poor clinical sensitivity of TG mass spec for detecting disease when TG antibodies are present. Note as indicated in the red oval, there was a difference in the median TG antibody concentrations between the three studies, lowest in the first study with the lowest percentage of undetectable TG mass spec, and highest in the latest study with the highest percentage of undetectable TG mass spec. So it seems the higher the TG antibody concentration, the more likely a paradoxically undetectable TG mass spec result will be reported. Now, what might be the cause of the failure of mass spec to detect TG in TG antibody positive patients with structural disease? It has been proposed for decades that the presence of TG antibodies might increase the metabolic clearance of thyroglobulin. We know that in the absence of TG antibodies, the half-life of free thyroglobulin in the circulation is about three days. When antibodies are present, any thyroglobulin will circulate as either free thyroglobulin or as a complex with the antibody. The amount of the complex will depend on the antibody concentration and the affinity of that antibody for the TG produced by that patient's tumor. If the half-life of the TG-TG antibody complex is significantly shorter than the half-life of free TG, thyroglobulin may be cleared to lower levels in the presence of thyroglobulin antibody. However, even if more sensitive mass spec tests were developed, 
If thyroglobulin antibodies facilitate thyroglobulin clearance, thyroglobulin measurement would be an unreliable tumor marker in the presence of antibodies. This is because as disease exacerbates, we know that thyroglobulin antibody concentrations typically rise. These antibodies would complex and clear more TG, with the result that TG levels would paradoxically fall as tumor mass and antibody concentrations rose, rendering TG an unreliable tumor marker in the presence of antibodies, regardless of the TG method used. Now lastly, since the TG antibody status of the serum is used to reflex the TG test to different methodologies, how reliably do current TG antibody methods detect interfering antibodies? Well, there are currently a number of TG antibody method problems illustrated by this comparison study of four different methods. Different TG antibody tests clearly report different numeric values, despite claiming to be standardized against the same international reference preparation. Seen here, there can be as much of a hundredfold difference in the TG antibody value reported for the same serum measured by different methods. Second, the manufacturer recommended cutoffs for a positive TG antibody, shown here by the red bars, are set too high. They're set for diagnosing autoimmune thyroid disease and not for detecting TG antibody interference with thyroglobulin measurement. And this leads to the reporting of false negative TG antibody tests. Now, guidelines state that the optimal cutoff for TG antibody positivity is the functional sensitivity limit of the method, a value that is typically much lower than the manufacturer recommended cutoff. And clearly, you can see here that some methods are insensitive and will report sera as TG antibody negative, but were reported as positive by other methods. There are clinical consequences to misclassifying the TG antibody status of a specimen before thyroglobulin testing. Classifying a serum as falsely TG antibody positive can lead to unnecessary reflexing of the specimen to a less sensitive TG method, mass spec or RIA, whereas classifying a serum falsely as TG antibody negative can lead to the inappropriate use of IMA and the reporting of a falsely low or undetectable TGIMA result. Both false negative and false positive TG antibody misclassifications have the potential to mask disease. So what is the optimal strategy for monitoring a thyroid cancer patient who has thyroglobulin antibodies detected? Well, it's now known that the TG antibody concentrations change in parallel with changes in thyroid tissue mass. Clearly, it is TG antigen that is the immune stimulus to, that maintains TG antibody production. This study clearly shows a relationship between thyroid tissue mass visualized by radioiodine scan and the persistence of TG antibodies during the follow-up of a cohort of antibody positive patients after they had been rendered disease free by their initial treatment. It is increasingly evident that the trend in TG antibody concentrations can be a useful surrogate tumor marker. This is shown by this study of nearly 1500 thyroid cancer patients monitored for more than five years. Shown on the left in blue, following the initial treatment, TG antibodies fell more than 50% in more than 70% of patients, with half the patients becoming TG antibody negative after four years. Note only 3% of this group had disease detected during follow-up, 
showing that a 50% fall in TG antibodies is a good prognostic indicator. Contrast this with the 25% frequency of disease seen for the patients whose TG antibodies fail to fall 50% and the groups whose TG antibodies either rose or appeared de novo during follow-up. 50% of whom had disease. When patients are rendered disease-free, the time needed for TG antibodies to disappear depends on the initial TG antibody concentration, as shown by the upper green panels. When a patient has a very high TG antibody, either preoperatively or in the first few months following thyroidectomy, it can take many years for the TG antibody to become undetectable, even if that patient was rendered disease-free by their initial treatment. However, a progressively declining TG antibody trend should be considered a good prognostic sign, and with sufficient length of follow-up, the right panel shows that TG antibodies eventually fall to less than 10% of the initial value. In contrast, patients with persistent or recurrent disease, shown in pink in the lower panels, TG antibody typically rises, fails to fall more than 50%, or converts from negative to positive, and only rarely falls below 10% of the initial value, even after years of follow-up. So to summarize, because TG antibody responds to changes in thyroglobulin antigens sensed by the immune system, serum TG antibody measurement can be used as a sensitive surrogate tumor marker test. Patients rendered free of disease typically display declining TG antibody levels. When the initial TG antibody is low, antibody may disappear within the first few years of follow-up. In contrast, TG antibody usually remains detectable and may rise whenever TG antigen increases in patients with disease, such as in response to the initial or subsequent surgeries or biopsies, a lymph node recurrence, or radioiodine treatment. A de novo appearance of TG antibody after a year of TG antibody negativity is typically a bad prognostic sign. It's likely that the trend in TG antibodies, when measured by the same method, may prove to be a more reliable tumor marker than serum thyroglobulin testing, measured by any method. This is especially the case if thyroglobulin antibody complexes are cleared faster than free thyroglobulin, because as disease progresses and antibodies rise, more thyroglobulin would be complex and cleared from the circulation so that the TG level would paradoxically fall, rendering thyroglobulin an unreliable tumor marker test in the presence of antibodies, regardless of the method used for the thyroglobulin measurement. So to conclude, optimal thyroid cancer monitoring depends on the patient's thyroglobulin antibody status. Patients without thyroglobulin antibody detected So to conclude, optimal thyroid cancer monitoring depends on the patient's thyroglobulin antibody status. For patients without thyroglobulin antibodies detected, it is optimal to monitor the basal thyroglobulin trend using non-stimulated TSH conditions and a second-generation IMA method with a functional sensitivity of at least 0.1 and preferably using the same laboratory. For patients with thyroglobulin antibody detected, it is optimal to primarily monitor the thyroglobulin antibody trend as a surrogate tumor marker using the same thyroglobulin antibody method and the same laboratory, and only secondarily monitor the serum thyroglobulin trend measured by radiomere assay or perhaps mass spectrometry. However, at this time, it's questionable whether the new TG mass spec methodology has adequate clinical sensitivity to detect thyroglobulin 
in antibody positive patients with disease. Thank you for your attention.